All right. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay, try better than that. Come on, kids. Try again. Try in your best Polish happy face. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm confusing you with these Germans. <laughs> they, are, they are so funny. Um, I, was told, I was told to make German jokes in this because apparently it will endear me to the uh, Polish audience. So I'm going to take the piss out of the Germans a lot. Um, come on, dude. Seriously. I, I, do you want to give the talk again? Ah, you got the best seat in the house. Right, come on in, please. All in, come on. Sit on somebody, I don't mind. They, they might. You can, talk, you can talk about things, I don't know. Hello. Whoa, there's a lot more people than I thought would be here. I should take the picture now, shouldn't I? <laughs> there was no one at your talk, man. Yeah, but that was after everything. Sure, sure, sure. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. You, you're a camera guy. I walk around a lot, so you're going to have a load of fun. Oh, well. <laughs> There's an Irish comedian called Tommy Tiernan. What he does is just to annoy the, the light guy, he runs back and forward over stage. <sighs> I was the light guy that day. Uh. Hi. If you're last in, come on. All right, all right. All right, I'm going to start. Hi, welcome to Where Did You Find That? The Top Secret Edition. Uh, my name is Niall Merrigan. Uh, this is me. I'm awesome, but apparently because I've got a whole slide just dedicated to me. Uh, you can tweet me at nmerrigan. Um, you can email me at nilemerrigan.no. And I would like if you visit my company's website to show appreciation because it's very nice that they let me come down here. And I'd also like to thank ABB and Rafael and Mikhail for inviting me yet again, even after the last time I came down here and caused chaos. Now. Right, security is hard, kids. It's very hard. Why is security hard? Stop laughing. Seriously, this is a serious question. This is a serious topic. Why is security hard? Oh, you're worse than the Norwegian audience. Okay, let's try again. <laughs> okay, security is hard because you've got to think of all the different threat points that I can use to attack your system. And you're not as devious as me. So, the thing is, all I'm looking for is one mistake to get in. Now, I'm going to point out something very early in this talk. I have 124 slides to get through in 45 minutes. I did the math. It says I need to move a slide every 21 seconds. Okay? This could be interesting. Oh, I just realized I need sound. Sound as in to plug it in. If we don't have sound, I'll just skip the videos. Don't worry, it's fine. Um, <laughs> just freaked my hall or my um, room monitor out. She's like, I tried to get the chickens. Um, now, if you weren't here beforehand and you're playing at home, you missed a really good joke. Um, I'm going to take the mic out of IoT because I don't like IoT. It's hard to spell and it's difficult to use. Now, the Internet of Things is a fantastic buzzword. Tripled up with big data and machine learning, you've got a triad of buzzwords that you can use when you're trying to sell things. It also means that it's, people are rushing into this gold mine trying to find uh, things to connect to the Internet. Now, my mother who's in her 60s, she's just retired. She's sitting down at home with a glass of wine, me on, on the other side, and she just nonchalantly goes, Niall, what's IoT? Okay? Now, <laughs> put yourself in the scene, 65-year-old woman drinking wine asks you a technical question. You stop, you think, and you give the only answer that you can. It's why? And she, goes, <laughs> she says, well, seriously, my, my, your dad wants to buy a smart TV. I went, oh, that's okay. So he just wants to watch Netflix on his TV. That's fine. I can do that. No problem. And then she makes another fatal mistake and says, no, but seriously, what's IoT? I said, okay, Rose. My mom's name is Rose. Hang on. Take a big glass of wine. You're going to need it. And she goes, okay. What? So IoT is connecting different devices to the internet. She goes, Okay. And, I said, and she says, such as. And I said, imagine a fridge connected to the internet. And she goes, why would you connect a fridge to the internet? 
And I have said, because you can. It doesn't mean you should, it just means you can. And she goes, okay, enlighten me. And I says, well, imagine you open your fridge and you realize that you've got no butter. So you close the fridge, you press a button that says, uh, send this message to my dad to say, buy butter, and then he forgets it. And then you get another idea of saying, okay, we've got this many different ingredients in the fridge, let's make something. And they go, oh, great. And I said, but it gets better. Imagine you had an internet-connected toilet. And she goes, why would you have an internet connected toilet? And I said, well, simply because you're going to share data between the toilet and the fridge. And she goes, oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> and decides to, and she's looking like going, I need something stronger than wine. And at this point I said, but imagine when you flush the toilet, your fridge knows what you need to eat. And it does happen. But imagine it gets better. Imagine when you flush your toilet and it talks to your doctor. Now, this is where I think it gets a bit weird because you'll start seeing things like this on message boards. You know, I'm sorry, you need to update your API to reboot and reboot your fridge to be able to open it. <sighs> the future. Now, there is another thing. IoT is becoming like this thing that people want to throw money at. You get this thing called a smart mattress. This was funded to the region of $1.2 million for a smart mattress. Why? Because its mattress sends an alert to your mobile phone when someone is using your bed in a questionable way. <laughs> Damn it, Timmy, you're jumping on the bed again. But Timmy's in daycare. Uh-oh. Um, mine's out of the gutter, kids. It could be the dog. Um, so apparently this is just a case of shut up and take my money. All right? Now, the thing is, if you've ever wondered how to find a smart mattress, a smart fridge, or even a smart toilet, I'm going to show you. Because you use a system called Shodan. Shodan is a search engine for the Internet of Things. It searches ports and uh, devices around the world at record speed. Now, if I want to pose another question to the audience, how long do you think it takes to scan the Internet? For one port, all devices, all four billion IP addresses. Somebody shout a number. One minute. One minute. Try a little bit more than that. A week. A week. Try a lot less than that. One hour. One hour. Well, this is going to take a while. Two and I've only got 21 seconds on this slide. I, it takes two and a half minutes to scan the internet looking for a particular port to see if it's open and the IP is responding on that. Now, if you are one of these people that uses like the cloud, it's great. It's my data center somewhere else. But if you use the cloud and you spin up VMs, for example, your VM has a maximum time before it's pinged and found out if it's up and running of two and a half minutes. Can you get your patches up and running at that, at that fast? So that's another consideration. The problem is people think that because you're scattered inside four billion IP addresses, you cannot be found. I'm about to show you something very, very different. So the thing is, you'll start off and you'll think, okay, what would I go searching on the internet first? How about a brewery? Because we're in Poland, it's a good place to start. And this is how you find uh, VNC enabled servers. VNC is a port 5900 and 5901. VNC is a free remote desktop connection uh, system that you can install. It's multi-platform. The problem is many people install it without a username and password. Okay? Ask yourself why you would do this, allowing remote control software on your computer without a password, because they think it's difficult to find. This, as you can see, has got no authentication. And this is a, this, a brewery in Boston, I think. Now, after you found your beer on the internet, you decide you want to go get a kebab. And at that point, you found a point of sale system in Portugal that will sell you a kebab, and someone's paid seven euros something for some dodgy meat he can't identify. You've decided you've had your booze, you've had your food, but you want to cycle home. And then you figure out you can't cycle home, so you're going to try and rent it, go on a bus instead, but you figure out your bus is broken, and then you decide to get a taxi home. This is a Spanish taxi spending 30 euros, which will get him home to his yacht, where you can control it, including including the alarm system. So if you can imagine, you're there at 3 o'clock in the morning, you find some businessman's yacht that you can control the alarms with without any authentication, what would you do? <laughs> would you reverse slowly or would you go, press that goddamn button? <laughs> now, 
you the, the person who's got the alarms decided realistically I want to get up I'm going to need to get a massage so they get the hydro massage now if you're a bit more and I really I can't say eagle eyed because I've got a 40 foot screen behind me but you'll see the thing it says pressure now this is something I can control from the internet so you will get jets of water where jets of water are not supposed to go you will be cleaned from the inside out Imagine a 15-year-old child, kid, boy, I don't mind, pressing a button repeatedly and you're getting buzzed someplace that you shouldn't be buzzed. How will you fix this? You talk to the internet witch. And I said witch, not any other word. Oh, come on. Seriously? You didn't get that joke? But this is a person we talked to, the witch, who gets viruses out of computers with magic, or as I like to call it, computer science. Now, that's all well and good, but they're only simple things you can find online. What about something a bit more dangerous? How about this composter with a big on-off switch up in the corner? Now, I like this one because it tells you it's on-off and it's currently on because the one indicates it. It's got a temperature of 37.7. It's got another temperature. It's got some other oxygen things. But this isn't too bad because this probably won't explode if you do anything to it. How about a pool control system instead? Now. The thing is, there's two giant vats up in the top corner. One says chlorine, one says acid. Neither are good things on your skin. Neither are things you want controlled from the internet without any authentication. Again, somebody's going to be playing with this. I found this German um, <laughs> control system. I don't know what it does, but it looks impressively bad. Um, it has a quit system. It's very German, it's very effective. It do, they don't skimp on uh, UX here. Um, I found this Dutch uh, control feeding system, which will give you 1.7 tons of grain feed down on your head if you so wish. Uh, there's this really nice, uh, lots of on and off switches. I don't know what it does, but it has a pump, it has some degree filtration, and it has internal and external temperatures. You can kind of see a pattern with this, how these are working. This, I think, is Polish, I think. I might be very biased and wrong. Is it Polish? Ah. What is it? Lithuania. Where? Lithuanian. Yeah. Well, that's news to me. Um, so the Lithuanians uh, want to let you play with their silos. Um, this is a pumping system in France. I found another one. Now, I don't know. Where's this one from? This has a calibration and phases, and it has a giant shutdown button in the corner. There, that one, um, which is kind of cool. This is a Bernie thing. Um, I define it as burning thing because I really don't know what it does, but it has a giant flame in the middle, okay, with extraction fans, and it's got Cyrillic. Now, is this Russian or is it some other, um, which one? It's Russian? It's a heating plant in Russia. This is why you love coming to Poland. Someone's actually going to translate all this for you. When I went, to, <laughs> when I went somewhere else, I, you can't copy-paste this image into Google and say, please translate. It'll come back with Bernie thing as well. Now, here's something from Sweden, because we like taking the piss out of the Swedes. I live in Norway. And, and this allows you to do uh, shut down and turn off. And I found this factory in Sweden with a giant on-off switch in the corner again. So you can imagine just dialing in, doing something. I'll turn off the factory because, you know, there's smoke coming across my lawn. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm giving you plausible, non-kind of scary things about it. This is a potato factory, very close to my heart as an Irish person. Um, <laughs> This, I don't know. I, I really like the schematic on this. I think this is from Italy. Um, it, but it is a really cool uh, escalator system. I don't know. I found this sawmill in Finland. Now, I don't know about you, but being able to control a sawmill really freaks me out. <laughs> Especially... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, this is also, I think, running on Windows XP, which is even cooler. Now, then I found the most insane, and I will say insane, user interface I have ever found on the web. More advanced than Outlook. Now, here we go, okay? <laughs> Whoops, jeez, careful. So, I'm going to try and do this from over here. Um, sorry, camera guy. Um, so, ooh, do I can use my big green laser? Yeah, big green laser. So we've got, here's the MSN Messenger logo. Um, here's the Deadly Something logo. Um, there's a, let me see if I can find it over here. Oh, yes, Bomba Caller, which I assume is a nuclear missile. Um, 
there's a pool for radioactive cleaning, some escalations, and then this big 4749 and a gas thing. I know it's a Spanish home heating system, but by Jesus, you'd want a degree in engineering to understand it. Now, again, this is online, and you can remote desktop or VNC into it as much as you want. <sighs> Why are these things online? Because someone decided that having a username and password was complicated. In this day and age, it's not. So I'm going to try a risky business again. How many people are developers in the audience? That's a lot of developers. Who's not a developer in the audience? Uh, why are you here? <laughs> I love that joke. It always gets them. They're all a bit confused. I'm just checking if my people are at work and not enjoying themselves. No, they're learning, my dar. Okay? No. Um, if you are a product manager or developer, okay, what I want you to do is if a, a requirement comes in and says, uh, we might need a username and password, change that to we must have a username and password. That is my challenge to you as all developers, PMs, product owners, you name it. Stop allowing people to have unauthenticated, unprotected uh, devices on the web. Two and a half minutes is all it takes me to find this, okay? Please don't allow your users to be found this way. Now, every time I see James van der Beek crying, it makes me very happy. Um, this is the guy from Dawson's Creek. He's also the guy in CSI Cyber. Now, I'm going to have to have, take a dig at CSI Cyber, but it's going to be very bad with... Um, uh, no sound, but we'll all, everyone think nice sounds in your head, all right? Go. If you're on YouTube, you'll be able to find this video. Now, you might not see things, but what they're doing here, because it's, I'm just going to ad-lib this, he's just going, well, I'm looking for malware, and if mom's comes up clean, then we can't find any malware. And how do we find malware? Malware is red. Um, <laughs> look, boom, malware. Wait for it. It stops. Oh, come on. There we go. Now, if you're reading that code, if you got that in a code review, would you slap the developer? I'd slap him back to the Stone Age and tell him to write good code. The other thing is, did you notice the factual inaccuracy in that video, other than me ad-libbing it? One of the things that happens is men are more prone to red-green color blindness, okay? So they would just see gray. So it would be gray code all the time. Okay, so this is a problem. So if you think about your users, if they're going to be men, they're not going to understand that malware is red. Anyway, after a while, you're going to be browsing in or you're sick of finding factories and things like that. You decide you're going to probably find other things like people's Facebooks. Now this, or so, this is a person doing real work, my bad. Um, this person is uh, kind of, as you can see, finished a good game of solitaire, but you might find someone doing Facebook updates. Um, does anyone spot what is going on here? Timothy Hovda is about to have a very bad day. That's what's going on there. This one, for example, when it's in Karma, um, it also points out something very, uh, very obvious to me, but it may not be obvious to you. Anyone's going to risk a guess of what's happening here? Excuse me, he's going to try again. Unprotected team viewer. Good, good idea, but nearly. Not what I'm going at, but I will, I, that is a good answer. Unprotected team viewer. Make you focus a bit more. Right, what's happening here up in the top corner, if we can do this, is this is an internet cafe. Someone has a remote desktop connection to it to do support and has left it unauthenticated because you know, no one would find it because who uses internet cafes anymore? Most likely this is as an airport. Now this is another person having another very bad day. As you can see, is probably live chatting as well. Now the thing is, every so often after that, you'll probably bump into people's mail. And this is where you could just do some real damage because, you know, if you've access to someone's mail, you can send on their behalf, you can do other different things. But what would you think if you found someone's desktop, what would you do? Would you do this? Random user two. Yeah, lol, everyone can connect. Now, this is... I'm sorry, I can, I can understand the comprehension levels because it rolls back the audience. <laughs> There's people going, yeah, lol. What's lol mean, dude? What's lol? <laughs> laugh out loud? Got it. Got it. Oh, laugh out loud. There we go. Now, but this is a, what we would call an Irish virus, okay? It's nice, it's polite, it doesn't do you any harm, just like me. Now, the thing is, if you were more Polish, you'd probably do this, or maybe German, I don't know. But here... <laughs> 
uh, uh, this is going to be banned on the internet for racial stereotypes. But anyway, this is, um, this is cryptoware. So this is a uh, crypto locker. So what someone has done is they've logged onto this PC using TeamViewer and, or remote desktop or whatever, downloaded a copy of some cryptoware and then encrypted the device, okay? On average, it costs something like one Bitcoin, which is, I think, $350 uh, to buy at current market rates, depending on which side of Brexit you're on. Now, the other thing is that it, after a couple of days, it goes up to 10, 10 Bitcoins. It's up here, I think, and it's $3,500. Now, this is a very easy way to generate money. Okay, because all you're going to do is you're going to have a person there and he's going to go, ah, well, you know, I'll nuke the machine, I'll restore it from backups. As we all know, all backups work. It's the restore that fails. And this case, you may not, it is true. You're all laughing, but I'm guarantee you, how many of you have like crash plan, some backup system, NASA's, et cetera? Come on, hands up. How many of you, okay, that, that's actually a very disappointing amount of not. Um, so all of you who are risking your biscuits uh, for with like uh, home systems without any backups, why? Do you just like living dangerously? Have you tried driving in Poland? Yes. Um, <laughs> Sorry, another joke. You had to be here for the start of it. Anyway, the idea here is that people will probably try and restore the backups. What they're doing now in a new format is to increase your, um, how should I say, willingness to pay. What they are doing is they are injecting child porn into different locations for to let you know that this is the only place that is unencrypted. So if you try and bring this to the police, you, they're going to find uh, kitty porn on your system. And of course, they're going to have a chat with you. All right. Now, you're laughing a little bit, but this is unfortunately very real because it encourages people to pay because three and a half thousand dollars for nothing to do nothing. You can buy this in a command and control system off the shelf. It'll cost you zero dollars Zero is lucky because they will take 10% of your take. That's what they do. It is literally like I'd like to rent a full on uh, command and control system to harm people. No problem. We'll just take 10% of whatever you make. Good. Now, after this, you discovered you want to go cry a little bit because you're going to have to stay in a hotel. And then you find all these different hotel business systems, which you can log into. Hi. Post for photographer. This is not going to look legit, is it? Thanks. Um, then you're going to find all this and you can see where it's going to be cheaper to stay. And you're going to have to go to the bathroom at some point. So here is a bathroom system. And as you can see on the bottom, it says, House, this screen is sanitized regularly. However, our network is not. Um, this is actually from Singapore. And it would be, if, as I was saying, I'm talking about the internet, I'm talking about toilets, it would be very bad if I didn't show you a toilet control system. Here's one. It's one of those public loo systems where you can press the buttons, you know, you pay some money, it washes itself after you've used it. So you can wash the person inside if the, as they're going. Um, Okay, and this is the uh, double edition. It's the Sweden Jumbo 2, and it has a restart VNC button on the bottom because, Jesus, you didn't need it enough. The problem with a smart toilet is it would lead to errors like this on your phone. <sighs> this gives me a chance to breathe for two seconds. You'll laugh a little bit. Come on, laugh. Well done. <laughs> hey, thank you. Right, let's talk about something a bit more serious. Right, I've taken you through something a bit fun. Let's go into the dark side of the web. Um, how many of you got kids? Quite a few. If you've got children, I'm about to say sorry. I have two kids. I get very upset when I do this part of the talk, so I will apologize. The problem is we as parents like to have ideas of what our children are up to. So we get these things called baby calls. They're two-way radios where we can lis listen into little Johnny and figuring out if he's still breathing. Because children have this nasty habit of doing this type of thing. What they will do is they will breathe, they will breathe, they will stop. And as a new parent, you're not too sure if you just broke it. And then you'll just, they'll go, <gasps> and you'll go, stop it! And just try not to wake the child because they've taken forever. However, someone said, wouldn't it be good if we could put a web camera in one of these two-way radios so that you could also see what the child was doing? So if that burp or fart is really just interpretive dance or they're trying to escape, you don't know. So what someone decided to do was they would put a webcam in. The thing is, a lot of these webcams are using a thing called UPnP, Universal Plug and Play. In your router, router, whatever you want to call it, it's a connection where it says, please open this port and allow it outbound. Okay? You've probably seen this. You probably, if you've got torrents or uh, other types of systems, uh, Skype, for example, does this all the time. Now, the thing also is that you'll get devices like this. This is little J. Is this, is, this is Theo's room. Theo doesn't know that he's on the internet. 
Okay? This is Theo's room. Theo doesn't know that his parents have a camera on him. Theo doesn't know why he hears breathing at night uh, from the microphone. Theo doesn't know why someone is shouting obscenities or sexual innuendo down at him in the middle of the night while he's trying to sleep. Theo's parents don't realize that his camera is being passed around the dark web for people to get their jollies off of. The problem is Theo's not alone. You get other cameras like this, and you even get, like, for example, Philo, who's got an empty, th an empty uh, cot right now. But we find little people like this sleeping. This is in Germany. You'll also find this upside down, or sorry, this is Jamie Cam. You can see the child sleeping. You'll find this upside down camera. And you'll see this type of thing, where people are sleeping, and the children are sleeping, and you can remotely control the camera, and people do this on a regular basis. The problem is you get headlines like this. Stranger hacks video baby family's baby monitor and talks to child at night. Now, I have a video for this, which I'm going to just talk about, and I'll skip over. The video explains that a hacker or person unknown, I won't say hacker, I would just say person unknown, had found these different devices, connected over the internet to it, and started playing um, some music, and then uploaded these videos to YouTube and tweeted about them. And they do this on a regular basis. The problem is that many people who buy these devices, or these, over, um, say, uh, uh, watching cameras, don't change the default usernames and passwords. If you've got D-Link cameras, for example, there was a massive vulnerability in that allowed you to do a, uh, uh, what was it called, remote code execution or even elevation of attack on that device, which means you would automatically take control of it. So the problem is that people are leaving these devices unattended. They don't even know. So I'm going to ask another question. How many of you regularly check your routers for inbound traffic or any type of uh, breach detection? There's a couple of paranoid people in the house. Good. No, I'm serious. I, I did it once I, I, a couple of times. I actually said, I, have you seen the new um, Pi Zero? The Raspberry Pi Zero? Or if you get a Raspberry Pi 3, install Arch Linux on it. Okay? You can set up an intrusion detection system on that that'll sit on your network and cost you about $30. And it'll tripwire anytime someone tries to break into your network. And it'll let you know. But you want to be watching for outbound traffic. You want to be making sure that someone's not controlling your devices because this is putting kids at risk. Now, you'll also find other things like this where someone's cam camera has either been maliciously hacked or unintentionally set up because I doubt someone would want to have them in their, in their, in their tidy blackies uh, wandering around the internet because this is just something what, like for example, this poor child, our gentleman in Greece, because a cam and this camera is remote controllable, it moves around. And this, unfortunately, comes over real-time streaming protocol 554. Someone hasn't enabled security on this so it's visible from the web without any authentication. And if I told you again, it takes two and a half minutes to scan the web, how long do you think your camera would survive before someone was playing with it? Now, the thing is, Google is planning to do, uh, for example, a patent here where they want to do interactive uh, animals where you can talk and look at your kids from an animal's point of view. I think this is terrifying uh, because I can only imagine what would happen if it broke it. But this is a, uh, my second call again. If you are allowing devices to go on the internet without authentication or passwords, please stop it. Change the requirement that they must have some sort of authentication. Also warn your users. I know it's impossible. Users do not read manuals. But at least tell them that if this is going out of the web, you must set a username and password. There's no way to do it otherwise. OK, excuse me. <coughs> Let's take change gears and talk how to find fuel tanks on the internet. All right? This is a bit more lighthearted because, you know, everyone likes playing with, with gasoline. Um, these are fuel tanks. How many of you work with oil and gas? Any of you? No one? OK. One, the, the, sorry. There's a, one of the great, thing, uh, great problems in oil and gas is how to get product from one place to another in the most efficient manner. In other words, what place needs the product most and early enough, and so you get it there on time so you're not kind of costing yourself money. All right? Now, the thing is, someone said, yeah, this would be a good idea if we had an internet-connected fuel gauge. So what would happen is you're there. And your gauge goes, we're down to 50%, Captain. And the thing goes, right, I will send out a tanker to you and deliver it. And that's really cool, because you can, you can find devices like this all over the web. Because there's a pro you only have to look at port 10001 and look for the uh, string content. Because this will give you, the, what is it, 2,500 uh, different devices in the United States. 
here's one I found in Norway. Okay, now if you can read this, and I'm gonna move a little bit away, sorry, so I'm gonna move around. You'll see in the corner here, okay? What's that say? Jet A1. Any idea what Jet A1 is? Aircraft it's aircraft fuel, good man. Aircraft fuel. Why would you want to be playing with this? I can log in to this particular aircraft fuel repository and do stuff to it. Now the thing is, I'm going to tell you something very funny here. This is a honeypot. And the reason it's a honeypot, because I don't think it would be running with a BitTorrent tracker. So I'm there, I'm just, I'm giving fuel over to Norwegian Aircraft or, you know, Ryanair or something like that, and while I'm downloading the latest version of Captain Marvel. You know, I don't know. But the thing is also these values are very way off. They're too small. Like five and a half thousand liters of fuel is very, very small. However, this is not. This is a one from Total Aviation DRF, uh, something in Hall Oppen in Germany. Yay. And this has Jet A1, which has a volume of 12,278 liters. And this is legit. You can remote into this and connect to it, and it's Wi Fi enabled. Now, if you want to find a legit um, fuel gauge, here's one from Ireland. This is the one from Top in Kilbarrick in Dublin. You only have to log in through port 10001 through Telnet. And if you're wondering about all the commands, the great thing is the developers did a good thing here. They documented everything. So you just go onto their help pages, download all the different commands you need, and run them. So you can see here we've got a couple of different manifolds uh, which have unleaded. We've got some tanks which have got running unleaded and diesel. And we can also find the different pumps control systems, you know the ones that go ding, 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 when someone's trying to use the pump uh, from the insert? This is this one, as you can see, also running on the very secure Windows XP. So, you can remote into this and give someone free fuel if you wanted to. However, if you are going to run a honeypot, do not run it in the cloud. Okay? People don't need unleaded fuel in the cloud, they need Jet A1. They don't need unleaded, okay? Now, the thing is, if you're going to run these things, it says from Southeast Asia 1 compute.amazonaws.com, I'm fairly sure that's not my local stat oil station in Singapore um, because what well, there wouldn't be there. But if you're going to run this, run this off a residential IP. The thing is, if you run this device, which is called ConPot, which you can download off GitHub and you want to have a lot of fun, Set up a, 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 a Linux box on your local network, give it ConPot, allow it remote access from 10,001, and look at the number of people that are trying to connect to it. It's quite fascinating. These are people trying to play with your fuel prices. I've got 15 minutes, fantastic, thank you. However, if you are just feeling like a bit more of a despot, okay? Despot is a bad person who just likes the word pot. Uh, you can go play with Coriolis gas tank control systems. Now, this is one I found. It's in from the US. It's quite terrifying uh, because you have things like GPU pressure, gas flow rates, gas differential pressure, static pressures, and other things. Again, can log in without any different type of remote authentication. Log in, just change the world, blow it up, whatever you want to do. Right, let's change gears again and go attack something else that I think is close to my heart, MongoDB. Right, MongoDB had a fantastic... Anyone using MongoDB? I'm sorry. Um, you know they say no SQL, no query, no, no, uh, no data. Um, <laughs> right, MongoDB had a great idea. They had this concept that you had security built in after version 1.4.6. Everything else before that was open. So people, what they would do is they would install this on different devices on the cloud, for example, because it's, an, it's a very quick way of getting data up and running. And I can see here I've got 31.8 gigabytes of data with a hosted suite of Vanta and different things here. I can also find this particular one, which was 12.1 gigs of uh, I want it, And I can see it's related to dev.wantsapp.com. Why worry about breaking into the system or trying to find a flaw on the front end when someone's just leaving the database wide open for you to play with? It's not a big deal. We can also look here. I went looking for the different sizes of databases. I could find all the way up to 381.7 uh, gigabytes. I also found this very cool one because if you look here, it says here, deleted because you didn't pass or protect your MongoDB. Now, some people are very nice and they tell you how they hacked you. Um, 
here's 1.1 terabytes of data. I found 1.7 gigabytes of database. I went looking for the word prod because developers are very predictable. They will use things like test, stage, dev, and prod for production databases. So I found that this was related to D-Ways, and D-Ways is a French system which allows you to rent cars. So you can go in and rent their database. Anyway, let's go to the White House. Uh, the White House, I'm going to talk about home automation systems. Here I've got a really cool control panel, which a lot of buttons, which I could probably press and make people have a really bad day. Um, because, you know, there's a, this room you can control. So imagine Sarah, Alexandra, and Dina having a really bad day where I changed from Justin Bieber to something like Corn, and they could have really, really upset uh, three girls. I could also play with this one, which is a control system in Germany. Yay. Um, and I could just, like, for example, the weather, the central the kitchen, the whatever. I found this one where I can change the streams. So if it was me and this, I don't recommend you do this, okay? A la Deadpool. Do not play Ride of the Valkyries, okay? <laughs> you can imagine that, or the Shining music. Here's a kind of an XBMC uh, front end. I also found this um, from a motel in the US where you could, do you know this, the uh, 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 video control system for a uh, TV? Um, I, this is a geothermal control system in, uh, no idea where, but this is a, uh, uh, <laughs> what was it, Poland? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I didn't even plan that joke. <laughs> that was epic. Um, this one's in Sweden where you can do a control system. This is a garage. I don't know where. And we'll move from the White House to Doctor House. Um, Doctor House has got some cool things. He's got this high intensity, I don't know what this is. Is it high intensity frequency something? Anyway, what this is, is as an ab ablative laser or sonic thing, right? Now, when I, if you Google Haifu, okay? And if you Google it, it's quite cool. It'll say, for removing, helping removing damaged tissue from your prostate. Now, that's not where your prostate is. <laughs> it might be if you've got your head up your ass, but it's not here, okay? <laughs> but imagine being that person that could log in and say, well, you know what? She could use a couple of years off her life. Pfft. Right. I'm serious, this is online without any authentication. 10 minutes, awesome. Now, here's a pharmacy control panel. Now, this is one of those things that's in the back office where you have your pharmacy stealing out all your drugs. So you can see here, they've got the different menus across the top. And this is from uh, the 13th of, thing of July. But I found in the back as well, this where I could actually write out my own drug receipts. So I could create one, rock up as, you know, Mr. Jones, and get all my meth. Now, if you imagine in Breaking Bad and Mr. White had access to this, it'd be so much easier. Anyway, okay, have you, oh, actually, good joke. Have you seen the European edition of, of Breaking Bad yet? Okay, uh, Mr. White, I'm really sorry, but you have lung cancer. Oh God, how am I gonna pay for this? It's all right, the state will take care of it, you're good. <laughs> the end. Sorry, they, Breaking Bad can only work in the US. <laughs> anyway, so here's a drug identification system, uh, just because in case you're wondering what pill you're taking tonight. Um, this one, again, for writing out different receipts as you need them. <sighs> again, I don't understand why these are online, probably because people think they can't find them. So I found some random stuff, and this is what happens when, for example, you leave your online thing, someone will try and randomly log in as admin. Here's something I have no idea what it is, but it's got 5,000 watts of power, so it's got to be cool. Um, this is two-factor authentication done kind of right. Um, the <laughs> it's very cool. It's very blurry on this size screen. Um, that is an RSA token. Um, this is the Sanazar Bridge. I don't know why it's online, but I really don't really want to know. And finally, one of the most crazy things I have ever found on the internet. What is this? A nu Everyone says nuclear power plant. It's not. It's a crematorium. <laughs> I know. I really should stop ending with this. Um, it's a crematorium. Oh, but a freak what freaks you out is this. An infant button. Now, if we go across, there is a, a man. It's a male. Uh, it's a, sorry, yeah, a male. There's a cardboard box. It has a 100 to 200 pounds weight, and it's the fourth case of the day. Now, this is found in 2012. Thankfully, this is stay offline, but this is a crematorium. Honestly, ask yourself, who would leave this online for children to play with? Okay? So, right, we're going to finish up for the last five minutes. I'm going to talk about Google. Now, Google is a fantastic search engine. 
really cool. You don't like to Google, it, it knows all your things. So when most people Google stuff, they do things like this. Recipes for ch chicken. Now, I want to point out a really cool thing for English they, people. Uh, recipes for chicken is how to cook chicken. Recipes for kids is not that. <laughs> all right? When I'm Googling, I Google things like this. And it, like, I really, the problem is I had to put Donald D. Because if you put Donald T, it goes a really bad way. Anyway, so, <laughs> okay, the question is, why does Donald Duck wear a towel? Why does Donald Duck wear a towel? To stop his feet getting wet, okay? Because he doesn't wear pants normally. Anyway, but... <laughs> It's in a long session, kids. Okay, now, here's what happens when I'm bored and I want to find things. So I'll use this in URL concept, and you can see here, like for example, index PHP and ID equals, this is the first precursor to an SQL injection. But if I use things like this, in URL FTP, in URL web.config, how many .NET developers in the room? A lot of people, cool. How, what do you know about IIS, ASP.NET? How do you know about the web.config? Web it can't be downloaded over IIS, over HTTP, correct? Yes. I mean, just nod and smile, guys. This is easy. But FTP, it can be, because there's no filter for that. The problem is a lot of people upload using anonymous FTP because they don't understand how to use web deploy or other things. So you can go looking for web.config files. And this is awesome, because inside in web.config files, you get things like this, the connection string for a database, um, which just means that you don't even have to hack the system. It'll just give you the control you need. You can also see that these people have done a really good job. They've got mail.yumainsurance.com, password equals, but they've also got the test account just below it, which has been commented out, because you know what? Comments aren't read, honestly. Anyway, you also find things like Twitter consumer keys and uh, access tokens, which, we, as we all know, are quite cool. But what you can also do is, once you've got access to the web.config, you can go up a level and find the entire site. And at the point is here, I can download the site or I can upload new files to the site, as what happened to Facebook. Facebook's file transfer system, uh, they found a vulnerability. A person had uploaded a new version of the password login screen and was tailing out all the passwords in plain text back to a system somewhere else. If you are finding this is going to be difficult to understand and how to find all these different exploits, go to the Google Hacking Database. Pretty epic. You can get things like, for example, footholds all the way to advisories and vulnerabilities, and things like files containing passwords. For the love of God, Google found passwords. If plugging Shodan and Google Hacking Database together is difficult for you, use Search Diggity. It's a free tool from Bishop Fox. You can download, plugs everything in together. And we're going to round it out with GitHub, because GitHub is where code goes to live, or die, or be all, whatever. Anyway, the thing with GitHub is people upload their source code to GitHub, correct? They forget that other people can read stuff on GitHub, correct? So we find things like this. If you go looking for smtp.gmail.com, you will get a couple of usernames and passwords as you need them, and it's very, very handy because you know what? You can probably find uh, any number of different databases there. Now, if we go here and went, I found this email properties on the Spring Security Login and Registration, complete with username and passwords, but We'll also see things like if I do password equals, I'll find 5.4 million results. If I do file name and config password, or file name and dot config and password, I'll find 248,000 results. And if I do it a little bit more, I'll find out 134,000 results from GitHub. And I found this one, for example. Here I can see the connection string in here, data source the whole way, all the way across, blah, blah, blah. And you can keep going looking for SA accounts if you so wish. If you want to um, audit your systems, and if you're using GitHub internally in your different organization, you can use a, a program called GitRob. GitRob allows you to search for different tokens um, to find out if you're sharing stuff by accident. Um, Google, or sorry, Amazon have a plugin into GitHub so that any time an AWS token is uploaded, people, uh, it gets automatically denied. Right, there's the resources. I'm gonna leave this on screen if you want to take a uh, photo of this. Yeah? Oh, there's no QR code on this. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Excuse me? What are you laughing about? Oh, the link to Google. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought, because, you know, dude, do you have that link to Google? Uh, yeah. G. Um, right. This is me. I've got approximately one to two minutes for questions. Fire them at me. Yes. 
Have I ever pressed those big red green buttons? I'm colorblind. No. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not colorblind. No, I have never not. I have never done that. I've never even connected to these devices remotely. I've just done this through the image search in Shodan because, uh, to be honest, I really don't want uh, my IP or anything tracked against a, a gas wellhead or other things. Um, I have uh, to follow on. Anytime I do find uh, kids on camera, I do report it to the ISP to let them, the families know that this is something silly. Can you fix it? Um, have you heard of Nando's? The chicken guys? Yeah, Nando's had a, I found their HVAC system online and I reported it back to them and they sent me a two free chicken dinners. <laughs> I'm a professional hacker. <laughs> we'll hack for chicken. Uh, <laughs> any other questions before I let you go? Yeah. Yes, sir. If you, if what are the consequences if you press the big red button? Yeah, it's the equivalent of going into someone's house and just like literally pressing, oh look, this is, should be off, and pressing it off. If you're caught, you can be. Now, I will point out that people use Tor or VPNs and other type of things for that. Bye guys, um, that you know, it's no problem. It's gonna be very hard to trace it back to you unless you're using a static IP. But the thing is, if you're, if you're gonna do this, you know, don't be doing it off your home computer, do it off your mom's. Um, <laughs> She's lived a long and wonderful life, and she can go to jail for you. Because um, the mothers are good like that. Um, sorry, mom. She'll never see this. It's fine. <laughs> she doesn't know what YouTube is. Um, any others? Going once, going twice. Go get some coffee. Thank you so much.